In this video, I want to show you how to properly install flashing around a pipe or a penetration on a torch down roofing system. Let's get into it. Regardless of what type of roof you're working on, almost every type of roof has some type of flashings or penetrations that are going on. Whether you have a T-top installed or a pipe where you need to install a pipe flashing, and these details are pretty much the same. Similar to any drip edge, low rise, scupper flashing, we want to make sure we take a few extra steps to ensure that we have a good bond between our sheet metal and our asphalt surfaces. Let's get into it and I'll show you how to properly install penetrations and flashings around them. All right, we're ready to install the pipe flashing. Now the first thing we want to do is install our target patch of smooth roofing. Again, we're going to be using polyglasses self-adhered mid-ply. We found this is a great solution. Instead of torching our smooth layers on, we're gonna be using self-adhered. It gives us the same quality, which is faster to install and safer since we're not using a torch for our mid-ply. The size of our target smooth is gonna be determined by the size of our flashing. Essentially, we want a minimum of four inches around each side. So we've got this cut out already. We're just gonna cut a hole in the center here to fit it in here. An easy and cool trick to find the center of any square piece is essentially just folding it down, making a crease right here, and folding it down in the opposite direction, and making another crease. And not sure if you can see it here, but we have this cross section here which points out the middle of our patch. That way we can cut a hole and get it installed. This doesn't necessarily need to be a perfect cut, you know, it doesn't need to be perfectly tight. As long as it's about a half an inch or an inch away from the pipe, we're good. Sometimes if the pipe is a hot pipe, you want to keep it further away. But generally speaking, half an inch or an inch gap is good, it doesn't need to be perfectly tight. There's two ways of installing this, either we can put it down or remove the film. Or if you have two people, you can just remove the entirety of the back film. Now what this gives us is a solid piece, so when we install our pipe flashing, it's gonna allow us to go from edge to edge, solid on one piece instead of going over a joint. Now before we install the pipe flashing, we wanna make sure we prep it, etch it, and prime it to make sure we have the best adhesion possible. Let's get going, let me show you how. All right, this is pretty much the same process as any flashing installed on the roof. If you watched our other videos, you've seen us do this time and time again, whether it's for a scupper, edge metal, pipe flashing, or T-top, the steps are pretty much the same. Anytime we're bonding an asphalt-based material to a sheet metal or metal product, we wanna make sure we scuff it up, etch it, prime it, and cut the corners off. So the first thing we're gonna do is round these corners. This is a step recommended by our manufacturer. What this does is prevents these sharp corners from puncturing through the roofing membrane throughout the years. Doesn't need to be perfect or it doesn't need to be uniform. Just take those sharp corners off. The second step in the process is to use a wire bristle brush. We have this installed on our drill. This makes the process faster, easier, and does a thorough project. You can also do this by hand. It's just a lot faster using the drill attachment. What we want to do is take this top layer of a shine off. We want to make sure that we get this edge nice and scuffed up. This is really the most important section of roofing to get, as this is going to be our primary area of waterproofing. Now we want to do the front side as well as the back side here. And I'll show you why later, but it's just as important. After we have our flashing scuffed, what we want to do is use our vinegar solution. You can use this or a metal etching solution. We prefer vinegar as it's easier to find and less expensive. You want to make sure you soak the entire thing, the front as well as the back. And you can just spread it with a towel that's already saturated with the vinegar and allow this to dry. You want to put it on one side, let it dry before you prime it. 
All right, now that our flashing is dry and etched and we're ready to prime it, this is just an asphalt primer. Generally, we recommend to use the same manufacturer as you do your torch down roofing. However, all asphalt primers work the same. We wanna give a nice solid coat on both the front side as well as the back. So you wanna get a good coverage and you want your flashing to look something like this. You wanna prime the back similarly. And I'll show you why later, but this gives you an additional layer of waterproofing and protection so that you're not only relying on the front, but you've also adhered the back just as properly. All right, now that we've got our flashing primed, prepped, and ready to go, we can go ahead and start installing it. We're just gonna slide this on. We're gonna be installing it using electric dip galvanized nails. These are inch and a quarter long. Um, these have a round head and just for the speed of the process, we're going to install it using a roofing coil gun. What we want to do, similar to all our flashings really, is install it in a three inch on center staggered pattern. So we've got our outside edge nailed every three inches on center. Then we want to come in about an inch or two and nail again every three inches on center offset from this outer strip. So you have really every inch and a half in a staggered pattern nail. That's gonna help a nice tight flashing installation and gonna prevent extensive expansion and contraction, making sure that we have a good bond for years to come. The reason why we prime the bottom side of our flashing is to make sure that we have a bond. Now, you can see that this layer of smooth that we installed has this film on top of it. When this flashing gets heated up, what it's gonna do is actually melt this membrane underneath it and create a permanent bond between this smooth membrane and this flashing right here. All right, now that we've got our flashing installed, we can go ahead and line up our torch down to start installing it. We've already cut a smaller hole right here. Pretty much once you roll it out, you wanna cut a relatively similar sized hole on the membrane itself. However, you wanna make sure that the hole that you cut, it's smaller than the actual opening. Once it goes over, now you can use this as a template to cut around it. So now we're gonna cut around it. You wanna leave an eighth to a quarter inch gap between the membrane and the flashing itself. So this gap that you see here is really not a problem and it's actually preferred to have a little bit of space. And similar to any other area in torch, when we burn this area, we want to have a proper bleed out to fill this gap up with that hot tar. The last thing we want to do to wrap this pipe flashing up is put a coat of poly flash 1C. Now we want to put that both around the pipe to flashing joint as well as this membrane to flashing joint as well. Even though this is completely sealed and waterproof right now, we have a nice puddle of melted tar here. We want to put a second layer of poly flash 1C on there just to protect it a step further. Now, you don't necessarily have to use this polyflash 1C, you can use any white mastic or silicone caulking. However, we prefer the polyflash 1C as it works great with the system. You don't have to go too heavy on here. Really just wanna cover that gap up. That's it. This pipe is gonna be waterproof and stay nice and tight for years to come. Guys, thanks for watching. We have a lot of other videos on this channel about torch down roofing. If there's anything that you like to do different, 
Let us know below, we'd love to hear from you. Give us a like, subscribe, and we'll see you in the next one.